Hi, I'm John Mather. I'm the chief scientist for the James Webb Space Telescope, which is planned for launch in 2018 as the successor for the beautiful and powerful Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, extending the science and discoveries of the Hubble farther out in space, farther back in time, to learn how we got here from the Big Bang. I was fascinated by science as a child. Uh, in fifth grade, I was building telescopes out of uh, cardboard tubes and lenses and uh, projecting the sunspots on a cardboard screen and uh, trying to learn about how optics worked. So I wanted to be an astronomer. And then as time grew on, I wanted to be a physicist. And finally, I came to NASA, and the opportunity was to measure the cosmic heat radiation, the Big Bang radiation. And so I came to do that, and eventually we did. We built a satellite that was conceived specially to measure it really, really well. So we uh, discovered the cosmic hot and cold spots that are the reasons why we exist, in the sense that the early universe had to have them, otherwise gravity couldn't have pulled together galaxies out of the primordial material. So uh, that was a 1992 discovery. Also before that, we measured the spectrum of the cosmic background radiation, which is to say, does it have the right intensity at each wavelength to really truly be the remnant of the Big Bang itself? So it does, within 50 parts per million, which is an incredibly precise measurement, and we did far better than we ever hoped to do. So um, that's what got us a Nobel Prize. It felt wonderful, of course, to receive the prize, uh, but I felt all along that it, this is a prize that recognizes the work of the huge team of people that built the Cosmic Background Explorer satellite. It was about 1,500 or 1,600 people that built it, um, mostly here at Goddard, some at Ball Aerospace, uh, and um, there was no way that one person could claim credit for that. So well, that's a story I like to tell, which is that a team built this uh, and, uh, a, um, and the public supported it. This was a difficult and expensive project, and the public uh, supported it, and, and we won. We learned what we were after. Because of that, we now have cosmology as a precise science. Uh, as before that, it was almost almost speculation. And so that was the big change that occurred because of that project. After that, I thought, what are we going to do that's ever going to be so exciting as that? And then I got a phone call that it's time to start the study of the new telescope. So that was 1995. The Hubble telescope had been repaired. We could see that it was brilliant and powerful, but it still couldn't show us everything. So what are we going to do next? A committee was formed, of course, and they wrote a little book, and they said, build the new telescope like this. It should be an infrared telescope. It should be at least four meters in diameter, which is considerably bigger than the Hubble. And we've ended up building one that is six and a half meters in diameter, more than twice as big as Hubble, and very powerful. We had to invent 10 major inventions in order to make this telescope happen. We had to invent ultra-lightweight mirrors that could be cooled down to very low temperatures in outer space. So even though our telescope has seven times the collecting area of Hubble, its mass is only half as much. So that's a truly incredible accomplishment. We had to perfect two different kinds of infrared detectors. Uh, we had to learn how to make uh, amplifiers to work with these low temperature detectors. Uh, we had to learn how to get one of the detectors down to 7 degrees Kelvin. Uh, we had to learn how to make a giant umbrella, uh, which is as big as a tennis court in outer space, so that the telescope would cool off all by itself to low temperature without having to have a refrigerator. Um, we had to invent lots of other stuff, too. Uh, but basically, uh, unless we had made those inventions, this whole project couldn't happen. So we didn't just take advantage of other technology, we made it happen. This is the uh, Goddard Space Flight Center's Building 7. It's our test facility uh, where we uh, put our telescopes and our instrumentation together uh, and test them out uh, in vacuum tanks to simulate outer space, either hot or cold, whatever they're going to face. Um, we test them uh, here also to see if they'll break. We shake them, we spin them sometimes on a giant centrifuge. We, uh, we uh, put them in a giant chamber with acoustic noise to simulate the noise of a rocket ship uh, going up. Um, and we have a truly enormous vacuum tank down at the end of the hall, which is so large we can put whole spacecraft inside to, uh, to simulate the conditions of outer space. So we will have, for instance, coming right up, a uh, test of the James Webb Space Telescope instrument package. Uh, we'll be in there for several months to verify that all of the instruments work together and that they are functioning properly and uh, everything is right about them. So this is a step on the way towards launch. Uh, we basically can never trust anything. Uh, we'll still work after you receive it. it has to, it's good when we receive it. We have to put it together to the next step and test it again. So that's our job here uh, in the test facilities.
build it, test it, try to break it. Build it some more, test it some more, try to break it again. And when it doesn't uh, break anymore, and you're sure it's satisfied, then it works. Then you send it to the next step. Uh, for the Webb telescope, it'll go down to Texas next after this. Then from Texas, it goes to California. From California, we finished the assembly there with the spacecraft bus and all of the uh, details of the rocket jets and the electronic boxes. From there, it goes in uh, a special barge across to French Guiana to be launched on the Ariane rocket, which is provided by Europe in our project. And it will go directly from French Guiana to outer space to the Grand Branch Point L2, which is about a million miles away from here. This is the space environment simulator tank. This is where we can uh, raise temperatures or lower temperatures for an entire spacecraft. So the James Webb Telescope instrument package will be put in here within the next few months and cooled down to the temperature it'll have in outer space to about 45 degrees above absolute zero. So this is the largest one we have here at Goddard. There's one in Texas that's twice as big as this, uh, where we'll be able to cool down the entire telescope along with the instrument package. Behind me here is the clean room at Goddard Space Flight Center where we put together very large projects. Uh, and at the moment, we are setting up to do the James Webb Space Telescope in here. So we have already assembled the instrument module, which is on the far side of where you can't see it. Uh, and in the foreground, you see this giant steel structure, which is where we will put the telescope itself together. Uh, there will be, in the center of this giant U-shaped structure, a hexagonal mirror made out of 18 smaller hexagons uh, that will become the center of the new telescope, the collector for the light from the distant universe that will then bounce off to a smaller mirror and then down into the instrument package. So over the next two years, this will be uh, completed here, and then from here it will go down to Johnson Space Flight Center in Texas to be further tested at an even larger vacuum tank that we have there. So this is part of the process of getting the telescope ready to observe the early universe. It seems to me that science education is one of the most precious things we can give to our children um, because children are born scientists uh, and they're curious. They want to know how things work. And so uh, let's sort of help them follow that instinct up uh, and keep that uh, spark of curiosity alive throughout their lives. The way I see it is our world is 100% uh, dependent on science and technology. And, uh, and we need to be a master of that to uh, go forward successfully.